Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be going over 10 builds you should try if you want to be absolutely broken in 7.32e. These are 10 builds that I think are going to be very strong in the current meta due to either the patch changes or certain heroes being nerfed so now other heroes can take their spot, take their throne, and finally shoot up into the meta, and let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken, <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank. I'll see you there. All right, so the first one I want to cover is just briefly Axe. Some of the builds are going to be revolutionary builds, or at least a little bit different. <laughs> this one, the first build I'm going over is Axe, and I honestly think the changes to Axe are just straight up good. I felt for a while that Axe is a pretty good hero, and it recently received a base movement speed increase from 310 to 315, and the radius on counter helix from 275 to 300. I would say two pretty significant changes, making the hero definitely better. So I would continue going with just brown boots into Vanguard, or even actually before brown boots. You go Vanguard, boots. The only thing I would recommend is going blade mail before blink. I'm personally, unless your team has a lot of follow up to blink call, like it's a game where you have a Skyrath mage, maybe a Sunstrike invoker you know what i mean like you have heroes that naturally follow up the call i would opt for a blade mail before the blink it really amps up your farming speed because you can pop it when taking stacks and the passive on blade mail just allows you to farm a little bit quicker as well and it gives you more kill potential my problem with vanguard blink hacks is i just feel like even when you call them with the blink you just don't do that much damage in a lot of scenarios so i would recommend trying out this build and the last thing to note about this axe that i will say is very very strong in my opinion is opting for an octarine refresh late game. So the build I went in my recent game was Vanguard, Blade Mel, Blink, of course I had Boots. After Boots, I actually went for Mana Boots after Blink. I was having some pretty major mana problems because I was snowballing and dunking a lot of people. This kind of just depends on the game, but the reason why the Mana Boots are good is after I went Mana Boots, I went BKB. After BKB, I disassembled my Mana Boots into Aether Lens, and then from there, I disassembled my Vanguard when I was ready to complete my Octarine Core, because the Vanguard is disassemblable at any point, so you can take the Vitality Booster, turn that into an earlier Octarine core, and then after that, you have a very large mana pool so you can afford to go Refresher Orb. And the reason why Refresher is key on Axe is you disassemble the Vanguard, you still have that Ring of Health. So now you get a cheaper Octarine core and then a cheaper Refresher Orb. And now you can blink BKB call a carry twice with Blade Mail. In the late game, it, it, GG, you know what I mean? Like you just take a carry out of the fight. They can't survive six point something seconds of blade mail. You can completely nullify their BKB or just prevent them from ever getting it off. It's a very powerful late game and it works well with the Vanguard. All right, next I wanna talk about Radiance. So Radiance is an item that will come up again later in this video. And I do think there are some other heroes that can consider Radiance that aren't in this video. So I'll quickly say those. I think you can consider Radiance on Spectre. I'm not a huge fan of it. I really am not. I think the Ag's Manta build on Spectre is just much better in most games, so I, I wanted to lead with that, but it's okay on Spectre, you know what I mean? It just does less damage on, with Illusions, like Radiance literally is just worse on Illusions, which is why I really hate Naga Radiance, like I saw Gork doing it for a while, personally I'm like super anti it, I just think it's really awful, and I don't think it's great on Spectre, however I do think it's pretty good on Wraith King, and that's one you can keep in mind as well, right? It's a classic Radiance buyer, the item is much cheaper now, it only gives you 5 less damage for 300 and 50 less gold, which is a massive price decrease. So yeah, definitely an item to keep in mind and consider buying. All right, now to talk about the first hero that I actually think can be a very good Radiance buyer is Abaddon. Yeah, Abaddon carry. Now it can also be Abaddon offlane. I think it's also good, but the recent change that Abaddon got was, first of all, Radiance got buffed, as I said, and then he got a base attack time improvement from 1.7 to 1.5. If you don't know what this means, let me give you a little bit of context. Recently, Nature's Prophet has shot up into the meta as a carry and as a right-clicking offlane. Well, he's sort of a right-clicking offlaner. He scales into right-click items eventually. And one of the major changes that Nature's Prophet got and some of the recent 
recent patches, was a base attack time improvement from 1.7 to 1.5. And that's exactly what Abaddon has gotten here, a major increase to his ability to have high attack speed. And the reason why this is key on Abaddon is, well, it lets him hit harder, but it particularly allows him to build up Curse of the Avernus stacks, get him getting to four stacks very, very quickly, right? He can immediately silence heroes now and get that off a little bit quicker. So that's key. It also just makes him better in lane, scales better. It just makes the hero much, much better. Base attack time is a big deal, especially for carries. So what is the build that I recommend? Well, basically, Radiance is good, so you can rush Radiance. You can literally go something like Treads. You don't even have to go Treads, but I think having like some sort of early game utility is good. So like Treads, Orb of Venom, Magic Wand. So you have a little bit of ability to fight early because you're a strong fighter early, right? You're a Photic Shield, very strong spell. So you're, you're a Kiri who can get active and take early fights. I don't recommend playing Abaddon and trying to flash farm the jungle. It doesn't work. It's not going to go well. You should be trying to win your lane and then dead lane your lane, right? If you can just kind of sit in your lane and farm your lane, great, right? If that's an option, great. If it's not, then you should be taking a fight, right? You should be looking to get active, make moves, pick up your Radiance. After Radiance, you go Manta. Why Manta? It's perfect on Abaddon because Mantas from Abaddon allow him to actually proc Curse of the Avernus. That's just passive that silences and gives bonus attack speed as well as slows the enemy. So basically when you pop Manta next to someone, every single Manta hit will actually proc Curse, meaning that you basically instantly silence the opponent and then almost instantly re-silence them when the silence ends. It's extremely powerful. On top of that, the Manta on Abaddon allows him to split push, it allows him to farm side lanes, it also just gives him a little bit of attack speed, which works very well with this new base attack time improvement. So this is definitely a build and a hero I would recommend trying as a core. The last thing I'd like to say about Abaddon, his talents are very good for this. At level 10 he has 8 strength, at 15 he gets 65 damage, at 20 he gets cooldown uh, reduction on his ult, and then at 25 he gets Curse of the Avernus attacks required. So very good carry talents and of course radiance just makes sense with borrowed time getting to the next one i do want to go over to the next radiance hero quickly before we move on to different builds and that's alchemist i actually think alchemist is underrated as hell i think this hero is extremely underrated i really believe it here's why okay now the stun at level one Alk Stun is a max stun duration from 1.75 to 2.2, a 0.45 second increase at level one, which is a big, big deal, right? That's a lot of extra pressure that maybe is an extra deny. It can get you a kill. It's a big deal. That's the only major change to the kit. They also made giving out scepters slightly better for damage, but whatever, it doesn't matter that much. But now the Radiance is cheaper. So now you get to your farming item, much quicker. You already got to it quick, but now you get to it much quicker. And then you get to your next item quicker. And I think honestly giving out Ags on Alk is insanely powerful. He has some really, really good talents. His 10, 15, 20 talents, in my opinion, are all really good. And I'm not going to cover them right now, but you can go this like magic damage build. So essentially the build I generally recommend if you're playing this hero, I like it offlane. I'm going to make a video on it. <laughs> but the offlane build I go is typically like Ringer Protection, Stick, Tango's Quelling, something like that. And then I go Mana Boots, just so I can spam my spells, farm it up, Radiance, after Radiance, Blink, BKB, Shard, and then from there it kind of just depends on the game, sometimes a Menta Octarine, sometimes a Shiva's, sometimes a Blink AC, it kind of just depends on what I need for the match, and Alk is a very versatile hero, part of the reason I think the hero is underrated. Alright, next let's talk about Clinks, a hero that I think will be one of the top pub carries of the meta. What did Clinks get? Clink's only got one change, and now when you exit Skeleton Walk, his invisibility, you pop out a Burning Army Soldier. It's this mini skeleton that gets damage based on your damage and hits at a flat rate. So you cannot make it attack faster, but you can make it attack harder. So you can itemize for this. So you can give the Burning Army Skeleton 30% of your damage and damage from agility. So essentially items like Butterfly can make these skeletons hit really hard. However, I wouldn't recommend building on it. I would honestly stick with the old build. Like, I really just think that this is one of those things where you don't change up your build. I think Clink is a good pub hero as is. It would get not punished that hard in lane, which is its biggest weakness in your average match. And then you just kind of farm the jungle and snowball, right? You really just farm the jungle, snowball, go Dragonlance. Funny enough, the burning army skeletons, they work with Dragonlance, right? They get your, your attack range. So having Grove Bow and Dragonlance is a major upgrade to this hero. And I, as I said, I don't think you should build around these skeletons. I'm not going to try to convince you guys that Clinks is like giga giga broken. Oh my God. It, it, so broken. No, it's just a nice change. It's just a good change. It's going to let you get that little bit of extra damage to finish off a kill. It's going to do a little bit of extra damage sometimes in the lane. It's just going to do a little bit of damage where you wouldn't expect it. 
and push a couple of kills over the edge and potentially change a fight. It's just one of those changes that matters. It definitely, definitely matters. So I would recommend trying this hero. It was already a good hero. So the build I'd recommend is if the lane is hard, rushing a Maelstrom. If the lane is easy, go Treads Dragonlance. If the lane is in between, you can go Treads Maelstrom. Maelstrom is the key to farm with your Q. After Maelstrom, go Dragonlance. After Dragonlance, go Gleibnir. After Gleibnir, go Daedalus. If the game is hard, you can go BKB instead. Basically, you want to go Dragonlance, Gleibnir, Daedalus, BKB in some order depending on the match. Then we have Jakiro. Just by normal items, the hero is good. The build I personally recommend is statting up early game. Your hero is very tanky and needs mana. So brown boots into magic wand raindrops. From there, you get mana boots. Disassemble the mana boots into Aether Lens. Then pick up something like four staff and glimmer cape and you're off to the races. The hero received major, ma major buffs on its best spell ice path, making it last on the ground for much longer and Macro Pyre now instantly does damage, making the spell simply do more damage and canceling blinks faster. It's a major buff to the hero, and it was once again already a good hero. Now for a bit of a crazier build. This one I'm going to try. I'm so excited to try it when I can. It got a giga buff, and that's Ancient Apparition mid. At level 10, which is the talent that enables Ancient Apparition's Ags, let me quickly cover what its Ags is so you guys know what it is. What Ancient Apparition's Ags does is it allows him to spam Chilling Touch with no cooldown. If you don't know what Chilling Touch is, it's his third ability which allows him to throw snowballs. These snowballs do up to 160 damage, they slow for one second for 100%, 100% and they give you 240 bonus attack range. However, at level 10, you get 300 chilling touch attack range, bringing it up to 540 attack range on top of your already 600 attack range. And then you can buy a dragon lance. You hit from like a billion range. Hard, really hard. And so, yeah, I just feel like it's good like this is just one of those builds that's good you can also pick up your shard to forcing creep waves like one of the only potential downsides of the hero is pushing in waves however your shard gives you 40 damage per second on ice vortex and slows attack speed for 40 so it, it really does push in waves well the only problem is you'll miss a lot of the last it's doing this way so it, yeah i would honestly just recommend going something like witchblade ags dragonlance uh after dragonlance go pike the reason why is you don't want to get jumped like this hero does a disgusting amount of damage you just have to not get jumped you just got to stay in the back and you're gonna pump damage like i am so excited i haven't been able to get a game in and it's a bit niche right like it's definitely something where you don't farm fast, but I recommend playing it mid because when you hit an early level six on this hero, you can just chuck ice blasts to the side lanes, right? And it has so much impact. Like it's actually so obnoxious to play against. So yeah, I have a lot of faith in this hero being a pretty damn good core. It's been buffed many a time over the last few patches. And so yeah, give it a shot. The next one is kind of something I wouldn't recommend trying right now, which might seem weird, but it's Ag Centaur. I tested it out in the lobby and I was really excited to try this build in the pub because they made it where when you use the Ags, hitch a ride, it reduces the cooldown from 45 to 30. So now it's way more usable more frequently. And it gives you stampede, which is a big deal because you can't be slowed. Like that's huge. You can get people in and out without being kited as easily. Like it's massive, 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 massive change. However, I expected it to be in a situation where when you used it, you also got the stampede damage. It doesn't seem to be the case. It just doesn't seem to work. You just don't get the damage, the stampede damage. And that's like a big deal. I still think it's good. It's a huge buff. Don't get me wrong, no matter what, which is why like maybe it's just good now. I don't really know. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard for me to say one day after the patch, but if they end up giving it the damage, they change it because I feel like it should. Right? It's kind of weird that it doesn't then it would be particularly strong and definitely something to maybe even rush. No, I'm not saying like Ags blink. I'm just, <laughs> you get the point. All right, then we have Warlock. I actually think Warlock has been a good hero for a while and now he just received a nice small change to Chaotic Offering, making it do 10 more damage on the Golem up to 30 more damage at max level. So a pretty significant change making the Chaotic Offering definitely quite a bit stronger. They also buffed up the Ags a little bit. So there's that. But basically, the main thing I would like to say is that the hero, I really just believe, is good. It's definitely a support that I would recommend trying if you have been kind of just spamming the same few heroes. The build I personally recommend is never maxing the heal. 
My friend, who also is a Warlock Specialist, recommended to not take heal at all. Like, his build was to actually max Fatal Bonds and go uh, Upheaval. And the reason why is Upheaval, Warlock's E, is like actually an insane spell. You just have to get an Aether Lens on this hero because the cast range is like not the best. But when you max out Upheaval, it does up to 110 damage per second, which is just crazy. Like, and it slows for a up to 100%. I mean, this ability is like kind of insane if you can get it off in a fight. It lasts up to 16 seconds doing 110 damage per second. And that's AOE damage, so it pairs with Fatal Bonds. And then you can also take Upheaval Radius at level 10. This one's kind of tough because 4% Fatal Bonds damage at level 10 is also like just really, really good. Like that's just like a solid talent. They're both really solid. But yeah, man, I'm telling you. And then at level 15, you can take 12 upheaval attack speed per second on allies. Guys, that's 12 to up to times 16. Let's say the average is like 12 times 8. That's 96 attack speed for people standing in upheaval, which is why you can take upheaval radius at level 10. And then really the big thing though is just the damage that the hero deals in early game team fights. It is gross because in pubs, it's usually just clumped up five on fives. Let's be real. That's what most fights are. So if you walk into the fight with maxed fatal bonds, max upheaval, you're you're just level nine, right? Not not that high of a level. Even if let's say you're level seven, right? And you're 303, which is like reasonable, right? You're 303 or 402, right? On your build. I even think you can go 204, right? Really maxing that upheaval as soon as you possibly can. It kind of depends. Fatal bond scales well because it lowers in cooldown. So it's kind of tough to not skill fatal bonds like just because of the cooldown unless you push in creep waves that they didn't even get off to in a fight uh, so i would probably go four or two most games but yeah i just really think this hero has a lot of potential if chaotic offering its ulti was a lower cooldown this hero would probably be broken in my opinion if they brought it to like 120 on chaotic offering i think this hero would be like straight up busted honestly this spell does so much in the early game like this golem cooks you just you just completely zone out of support with this golem it's it's pretty wild all right next up is witch doctor io honestly i'm like slightly a hater of this strategy i think it's like a little overhyped even by game and gladiators the major winners themselves however it got buffed significantly so it's hard for me not to hype it up a bit it still does the same heal damage at level one one, the voodoo restoration which is the whole point of witch dr io and i'll get into it in a second but yeah basically it's the same thing at level one but it's six extra heal damage at max which is kind of a lot right it, it actually is kind of a lot extra at max and then they also made the level 20 talent better on top of that they didn't really nerf any of the major items that you would go with this build you would consider going mech in some games if you know it was just like a good healing game you would just go the greaves and they did nerf greaves not by a ton, so it's like definitely still very viable to go Greaves. And you just pair up the Witch Doctor with the IO because how it works is when you turn on Voodoo Restoration, you're healing yourself and then you're healing the IO, which then heals you again. You get the point? <laughs> so, so basically, you heal a lot. And it's very good. And in the lane, what, uh, what Ace does, the offlaner for... Gaming Gladiators, the build he went, is Headdress. Headdress, three branches. In the pro game, he went Quelling Blade because he was laning against Treant, but you would go Headdress, three branches, and then you just rush Mana Boots. Because then when you Mana Boots with the IO, because the, the reason why you can never go this build on Witch Doctor, like Max W, and the reason why I think it's like generally one of the worst builds in the game, if you actually try to do it without IO, like completely unplayable in my opinion, like super awful, like really, really awful. It's because you don't have enough mana, but with IO, when you mana boots, you mana boots yourself and then you mana boots the IO, which then mana boots you again. So you just get a ton of mana, like a ton of mana. Like it's not even cool. There's no other mana region in the item in the game that comes even close when you're playing Witch Doctor IO than mana boots. It's like disgusting. <laughs> it's really disgusting. So yeah, you buy Pipe, you go Kaya Sanj, you go Greaves, you go Mech, then you go Shard. You always buy your Shard as fast as possible. The only selling point of Core Witch Doctor, in my, in my opinion, like if Witch Doctor didn't have a Shard, I don't think you could go this build. I think the Shard is way too damn good. It gives you a second Death Ward. It's a little bit weaker. It gives you a second Death Ward that does a lot of damage and it keeps you safe. So really, you got to max out your W. Then after maxing W, you max Maledict. He did go 1-2-1 one, uh, one, one at level 4, so he did take a point in the stun, which makes sense. It's it's good at level 1. And honestly, Maledict nowadays is really strong at level one so like you really don't need level two maledict I, I used to hype it up all the time and i think for good reason but you really actually don't nowadays like maledict level one is quite good you just need to make sure that when you use maledict you're 
all inning because that's how the ability works. It does more damage if you do more damage. All right, and then finally, the last build I'm gonna get into is Omni Knight Shard Rush. So the build you wanna go is Phase Boots, Wind Lace, Drums of Endurance, and then uh, just Shard. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take advantage of one of the most significant buffs of the recent patch, Degen Aura on Omni Knight Radius Increase from 400 to 450. I mean, can you even run away from Omni Knight? You wanna know something funny, guys? You wanna know something really funny? This is, this is honestly hilarious. It's really, it's really funny. If you go to Dota buffs win rate, at least right now, at the time of me making this video, Omni Knight's win rate, even though he received a buff, the hero received a buff, the hero's win rate is down. Now, of course, that could be coincidence. It could be coincidence, right? You know, it's a very small sample size. Could be coincidence. Or it can be the fact that people read the patch, they read Degenora, and so, oh, let me try the new buff Degenora, and then realized it's shit. And I shouldn't buy Degenora on Omni Knight, even though it is a 40% slow, which honestly is significant. Like a 40% consistent slow is significant. The problem is where do you fit this in on a support Omni Knight, which is the main, like, unless you're going core Omni Knight, which maybe Radiance core Omni Knight, that's the future of Dota. Radiance core Omni Knight boys with Degen Aura. You can't get away from the Radiance. I don't know, you get the point. I just, <laughs> I can't believe they actually buffed this like this. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't actually play Omni Knight, please spare your teammates and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.